Hi, in this video we are about to add memory sessions to our Telegram bot. So right now I choose memory M1 and I'm going to introduce myself. So I say, hello, my name is Oscar. And of course bot will remember my name because it has implemented memory. So when I ask the question, what is my name, it will answer correctly. But right now I will choose the second memory. I will choose M2 and I will ask the question, what is my name again? So in this particular moment, bot will have no idea what is my name because I have never introduced myself in memory M2. So let's change that. I will right now introduce myself as Marco and of course bot will remember that. And the same thing we can do with memory M3, which is also completely separate memory slot. And I will introduce myself as Walt, why not? And bot will remember also that. So right now when I switch between memory M1, M2 and M3, those memories are completely separate and we can run very different conversations between those three memories. In this tutorial I will show you how you can build such a bot, but basically you can use such a memory sessions to make your Telegram bot public and every user will have very separate memory. So let's get straight into that. I will use Zeb as our memory software. Basically, Zeb is responsible for collecting the conversation history and then it can be accessed by simple API. And what's the best about Zeb? It can be self-hosted. So I will deploy it with Docker Compose. So let's go right now to the terminal and let's install Zeb on the server. First, I need to, of course, log in to my server, which is DigitalOcean Droplet, and I will clear the terminal. As you can see right now, I've got only two folders right now, which is Flowise and Snap, because I've got Flowise installed on the very same server. Right now, I'm going to clone the repository of Zep, and of course, I have the Zep directory right now. So I switch to Zep directory, and I need to add my OpenAI key in env file. So when I do this, I can save this file and close nano editor. The only thing I need to do right now is of course simply type in docker compose app-d and after a few minutes, Zep should be installed on our server. As soon as the installation is completed, we can check on which port Zep actually operates. By default, it's port 8000, but it's quite simple to check. You need to type in docker container ls to list all the containers. And as you can see, Zep right now uses the port 8000. So it's exactly as by default. When the installation is finished, we can go to Flowwise and create our chat flow. I will use conversational agent chat flow from Flowwise Marketplace. And of course, we need to enter here OpenAI key and SERP API key. You can click use template to fill those fields and use this template, but I have already done this and I have entered my API keys. This chat flow uses default buffer memory node, so whole conversation history is stored within Flowwise instance. And of course it works properly because when I introduce myself to the bot and ask about my name, it provides me the correct answer. But right now I'm going to delete buffer memory and replace it with zep memory. For this purpose, I go to the library of Flowwise nodes and in category memory, I look for zep memory. Of course, I put it on the canvas and connect it with conversational agent node. Next, I need to provide the correct address of my Zep instance. So basically, I simply paste IP address of my server with port 8000. If you have configured authentication of your Zep instance, which is also recommended by the way, you should add the key under additional parameters of Zep node. Now, as I saved the workflow, I'm able to test it. So I'm going to introduce myself and say, hello, my name is Oscar. And actually nothing happens. I receive no response. And after a few minutes, I only get an error about timeout. The reason for that are the wrong settings of server firewall. So let's investigate this problem and solve it. Right now I'm going to check the firewall rules and as you remember Zep operates on port 8000 and actually we have no rule here for port 8000. So what we need to do is simply add such a rule for our firewall list. And right now when it's added, 
I can check again this list and as you can see port 8000 is fully allowed for connection by the firewall. Now as I updated those settings I can clear the chat and test the chat flow again. So once again I introduce myself, I say hello my name is Oscar and after a few seconds I receive the response. So right now I need to check if the memory works correctly so I ask about my name and I have the correct response. Let me show you right now how you can use memory sessions with FlowEyes and Zap. Basically what you need to do is simply click code icon in FlowEyes and under tab CURL you can find additional parameters. Among those parameters you can find those connected with Zap memory and there you can find session ID. This is the parameter that we need to overwrite by doing our calls to FlowEyes. Under list of parameters you can find example CURL call and under key override config you can specify your own session ID and of course other parameters if you want. I've prepared simple NA10 workflow to show you how it exactly works. So in the first HTTP request node I'm going to introduce myself through simple API call and in JSON body you can find that under question key I say hello my name is Oscar and I'm going to override the configuration to be precise the parameter session ID and the session ID in this case is memory1. In second HTTP request node I'm going to use the same configuration but I will ask another question which in this case is what is my name. I also point to the very same session ID which is memory1. Let me right now close those windows and show you the third HTTP request node in this workflow. So in this request node I'm just going to ask the question what is my name but I'm not going to point to memory1 but I'm going to point to session ID memory2 which is totally different. I just want to mention that all memories so both memory1 and memory2 are empty right now. After clicking execute workflow I need to wait a few seconds and in the first part that I want to show you only memory1 nodes are executed. So when we have a look on the first HTTP request node where I introduce myself you can see that we have response hello Oscar how can I assist you today. And in the second HTTP request node where I ask about my name I receive the correct answer which is your name is Oscar. Now I'm going to connect trigger node with the third HTTP request node where I point to session ID memory2 and I'm going to execute the workflow. I just want to remind you that I haven't introduced myself in memory2 and only ask the question what is my name. And right now as you can see I received the information that chatflow has no idea what is my name. This of course proves that both memory1 and memory2 are completely separate and do not overlap each other. Right now I'm going to add credentials to NA10 and of course I will start with Telegram. I already have my Telegram bot so I want to retrieve the API token. You can do this by typing command my bots in Telegram profile botfather. When you have your API key you just need to copy it, go to tab credentials in NA10, search for telegram API and paste there your access token. I will also rename my credentials and when everything is fine you can just click save. Then you should see the green box that confirms that the process of connection is successful. Next I'm going to create my Redis database. I have already here my subscription which is the free account on Redis cloud. I will name my database workflows and I will check other parameters. Actually I will leave them by default and at the end of this process you can see that your username should be default and you will also be able to copy your password to the database. If everything is fine you can click activate database and wait a few seconds maybe a few minutes until you see the green icon. As your database is created you can copy the host address and go back to NA10 to credentials tab. There you need to add new credential which is simply Redis. So search for Redis in NA10 library of credentials and you can paste there your host address under field host. Next you also need to specify port of your database. So you need to go back to Redis cloud dashboard and copy the port 
of your database. You can now paste it in field port in NA10 credentials. This is simple as that. The only field that is left right now is password. So you can go to your Redis Cloud dashboard and in the bottom part of your database configuration, you can find default user password. Just copy it, go back to NA10 credentials and paste it in field password. When everything is fine, you can click save and NA10 will do a test connection. When the test is fine, you should see the green box. If you want to work with Redis, but not necessarily by typing commands in terminal, you can download Redis inside desktop app. And basically you just need to copy the address from your dashboard, go to freshly installed app and create new database. There you just need to paste this address in field host and the other fields will fill automatically. In my case, the only change is database alias. So I will change it to workflows to avoid the long name in app dashboard. When other parameters are fine, you can click Add Redis Database. With this app, you are able to control the records. So basically, when we add new records, you will be able to see or edit them in dashboard of this app. But the question is, why we use Redis Database when we can use, for example, low-code database such as Airtable? Well, the answer is response time. In case of Redis, response time is extremely short. And I've prepared the workflow to show you the difference between Airtable and Redis. I will add the very same record to Airtable database and to Redis database. And finally, I will show you how different is the execution time of those two workflows. In case of Telegram bots and actually of any other bots, response time is crucial. We need to provide the fastest possible answer to the user who needs the information. Now, as I executed the workflows, I can go to execution tab and show you the difference. In case of Airtable, the whole execution time of the workflow was around a second. In case of Redis, it was around three times faster as in case of Airtable. This is the significant difference which affects the whole user experience. I will also go back to my Redis app to check if the record was added properly through the workflow. So I refresh the view and yes, my record is here. From this app, I can delete it or for example, update it if I just have such a need. Let's go now to the NA10 workflow, which is responsible for managing memories in our Telegram bot. Basically in this workflow, like in any other workflow, everything starts with trigger. I have pinned here example data of Telegram message. And this is of course the initial start message, which has been recognized by Telegram as bot command. When the workflow starts, I want to send information to the user that bot is thinking. So I send the typing action and user should expect the answer very soon. At the same time, I want to check if user sends the initial start message. If he do so, I want to send him back the list of available memories that he can choose. So memory M1, M2 or M3. However, when the user sends any other message than initial start message, workflow needs to qualify this input as the message that should be answered by the bot, or it is the bot command. So for this purpose, I use if note to check if input from Telegram trigger includes bot command parameter or not. When the message from the user has been recognized as a bot command, I want to check if this command is equal to current memory. This is actually a command that enables the user to check which memory session he or she is currently using. So by calling this function, NA10 workflow will make a request to Redis database to return current memory for the specified chat ID. At the end, user will receive, of course, the message with the result. So for example, current memory is M1, M2 or M3. Any other commands in my Telegram bot are responsible for switching between memories. So for this purpose, I use simple switch node in NA10 according to the input from the user. So the memory he or she choose M1, M2 or M3, I want to direct the workflow to the specific output. I also have the fallback output where I want to direct the workflow to the error message. When the user choose the memory, the record in Redis database is updated. So as a key, of course, I use the chat ID and as a value, the specific memory M1, M2 or M3. 
of course, after updating the record, user receives the message with confirmation that currently, for example, M1 memory is used. The same sequence has been applied to all memory switch commands. So no matter which memory the user choose, every time the record in Redis database will be updated and user will receive message with confirmation with the number of currently used memory session. In case user sends the command, but it's not recognized by the workflow, so it simply doesn't exist, I want to send the message that command has not been recognized. On the other side of the workflow, there is a sequence responsible for handling messages from the user. The first step is to check, of course, which memory the user is currently using. So for this purpose, we use Redis node to return the last saved number of the memory that the user switched to. If by any chance the user didn't choose the memory and this record is empty, we want to check this with if note. And if such situation takes place, we want to send the message that the memory has not been set and just send the message start to choose the memory. In any other case, the workflow will check which memory number has been returned by Redis node. So depending on the number of the memory, the specific output path will be activated. And finally comes the crucial part of the workflow, which is sending the HTTP request to Flowwise chat flow. In all three cases, so for all three output paths, we want to use the same endpoint of the chat flow in Flowwise. Basically, the only parameter that will change is the session ID for ZEP memory. Those parameters are specified, of course, in JSON body of HTTP request node. So as a question, we send the message from the user, which comes from Telegram trigger. And as a session ID, we make a combination of chat ID and word M slot one, which stands for memory slot one. Feel free, of course, to make your own suffix for session ID. It can be totally different than mine. All HTTP request nodes that make a call to Flowwise have exactly the same configuration. The only thing that changes is the suffix. So in this case, I have M slot two, which stands for memory slot two. The other things are completely the same as in other two HTTP request nodes. Remember that we point here every time to the same chat flow in Flowwise. So no matter which memory the user choose, the features of the bot will always be the same. The only thing that changes is history of conversation. Finally, the user of the bot needs to receive the response. So what we need to do is simply take the output from HTTP request node, which is the output from Flowwise, and send it to the user. The same thing takes place in all three memory sessions. In case the switch node returns an unexpected value, I want to send to the user an error message. And actually, that's all. This is how looks the whole workflow for this chatbot. Now, of course, it's time to test the bot. So I send initial start message and I receive the list of comments. So available memories. I choose memory M1 and like I always do, I simply introduce myself. Please note that in the meantime, I sent a command current memory and the bot sends me which memory I currently using. And this is of course memory M1. Now I'm going to change memory to M2 and I'm going to introduce myself with different name. So I say, hello, I'm Walt. Next, I'm going to change memory to M3 and also introduce myself with different name. So I say, hi, I'm Marco. Now, depending on which memory session I use, I will be called by the bot differently. I have also very separate conversation histories. So when I say something in memory M1, it's not available in memory M2 and M3 and so on. If you want to add another functionality to your Telegram chatbot, I've prepared a tutorial in which I show how you can build an AI Telegram voice chat. With this video, you will be able to build your own voice chatbot with Whisper and Eleven Labs. So basically, the bot will be able to recognize your message and send you a voice response. I leave link to this tutorial in the description. And if you like my video, please give a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. I highly invite you to join my newsletter. And of course, see you very soon. Bye.